Hello again. This is Ryan with BetterTattooing.com, and today we're going to be talking about really complex large scale designs. <coughs> All right, now that that's over, let's get into it. What are really large complex designs? Well, Anyone's going to like, this is going to be subjective, of course, but most people will think it's going to be like you know, intricate dot work, geometrics, things like this. Like, look at Adrian Lee's work, right? Like, really large, complex stuff. Steve Moore, another one. Great stuff, right? But realistically, when we're thinking about complex designs, what we're thinking about is not just the artwork that's been created, but actually the process and how we apply it, right? Complex design is going to consist of two things. One, especially if it's large, it's got to be big, right? It's number one. Number two, is it's going to have an established, established, you can't multitask. Foreground, midground, and background. And three, it's going to require multiple sets. Okay, so this is a complex design. It doesn't matter if something is big, if it can be done in a single sitting, it probably isn't too complex, right? Most things that are going to be able to be done in a single sitting, which we can be making a video about why that's not a good idea anyways, but we'll get into that another time. Anything that can be done in a single sitting normally doesn't have a very well established foreground, midground, and background. There's planes inside the design that have to be established to create depth, right? Most illustrative tattoos you see, where it's or old school stuff, is just single plane things, right? It's flat, it exists where it is, maybe there is depth to the design, but there isn't something that is in front of the focal point or behind the focal point when you're doing stuff. So. This is where we get into things that are complex. Now, how do we approach these to make it truly, as we call it, like, quote, really complex? The first thing is with this multiple sets, the established foreground background, and how big it is, based on the complexity, is we got to think about how the tattoo will age. So, really complex large designs are going to suffer, especially if they're done in kind of a rushed way, of fading and aging normally, like unevenly, right? It doesn't matter what types of, of pigments that you use, all pigments are going to break down at different rates. So if it's blacks and grays, the things that are in there in a very light wash, like 5 or 10, 15% wash, is going to fade out and look lighter and brighter than, let's say, a solid black thing over a period of time, let's say 10 to 20 years. So when we get into large scale complex designs, what we're trying to do is identify the parts inside the tattoo that are going to need to be established first in the timeline before the last things need to be established, right? Um, on average, we're going to be looking for, depending on the effect, right? We're going to be looking at the effect and age, and then we're also going to be looking at the product and age. Okay, so these two things are very specific when you get into these large scale designs, right? The first, the effect and the age, what we're doing is we're looking at the aspect of the design that's been applied to the person's body, and we want to think about how that ages, right? If we have a skull and there's smoke, this is a bad example, but skull with smoke, the smoke that's coming off of it is going to be colored. Maybe it's going to be a pink or a green or a blue or whatever, but the skull is going to be very heavy, dark black. How do we want that to look five years from now? Right? Not just how it's going to look for Instagram, so we can post it up there and get all those followers, but realistically, what is it going to look like once it ages and settles in the skin? If two different parts of the tattoo are going to age at different rates, right? it's going to end up eventually looking like those two things are not part of each other. They're not congruent. So how do we fix that? Right? One is we do staging. Staging of appointments. The staging of appointment is going to be large scale stuff, especially if I'm doing a sleeve and I know I want a very soft background aspect inside of this tattoo. Let's do a bunch of floral stuff with some shadows or something like that, whatever, right? I'm going to approach that aspect of the design first. Mm -hmm. I want to make sure that the background is done. It's going to be set. It's going to age and it's going to soften at a more rapid rate or at least have a head start before I start to really well define things. So if I'm doing a large scale design, let's say this flower example and just keep running with it. If I'm going to be doing the background first, right? It's be my timeline of stuff I'm going to do. Timeline. We got three sittings we know we're going to be doing for this tattoo, right? The first one I'm going to do is I'm going to take my soft aspects and I'm going to do them first, right? I'm going to establish that background. I might do some gray lines and stuff or any of the things that need to be 
may be built up later in the future, be well defined in the future, the focal points, things like that. But I'm gonna get those soft aspects in first and I'm gonna let them age. And I'm gonna create a timeline off of this, right? This timeline of these soft aspects that's going first, I've gotta think about based on the person's skin, their ancestry, genetic background, their lifestyles, like how much sun they have, how healthy they are, how old they are, how that is going to age, right? And I'm gonna think within a given timeline between X and Y, right? We'll say it's six months, where I think that this pigment that I'm putting in is gonna really start to settle in their skin. I'm gonna do that first pass. Six months from now is gonna be the next appointment, right? And this may seem like it's crazy. We could just get it done in three weeks, you know? If I'm really going for that longevity, I'm really pushing for something that's gonna look good 15 years from now, I'm going to utilize the body's natural ability to age as part of the design because we're not working on canvas. This isn't something we just hang up on the wall that is just going to be free from any stress and maybe only light's gonna damage it. No, people are gonna live. We should utilize that living aspect of them to build upon the tattoo, right? So we'll do our six months, then we'll do our next section, right? And in between that next session, what we're gonna be doing is thinking about what is the next thing that we wanna do, right? What effect is gonna come next? Should we establish all of the mid-ground focal points that are gonna be overlaid maybe on top or next to these things that we had just put in, right? With uh, six months ago or whatever, uh, with the background. Like how is that gonna age, right? And if we do that with the final bits we're putting in solid black and highlights, when do I want that person to come back in to make sure that like all of these things are aging accordingly to help promote better viewability inside the design? If it works at this timeline or that timeline, whatever. I mean, some of the big scale, sorry, big scale, large scale, complex designs I'm doing right now have a lifespan of about three to five years before they're complete because we're really toying with that idea of using the body and letting the person age and letting it settle and live before we start getting into it and polishing it, right? <clears throat> and then... <laughs> that's basically the effect and age part, the staging of appointments. The next part we're going to get into is product and age. The things that we're using, if it's consistent, consistently, <laughs> we can count on a certain lifespan out of those products, right? So like if I'm always using pigment X and pigment X in my experience looks like this in five years, I can accurately guess my staging for whatever those complex designs are, right? So we're going to be looking at the ink is the number one thing we got to figure out, right? if it's powder, if it's organic or whatever, you know, if it's banned or not, because the band is a good thing, people, even if you don't think it is. I know it makes our job harder, but the final person, the end user, that client, their health is our main concern. That's number one, good design is number two, okay? You fight with me over it later, I don't give a shit. Um, we're gonna be paying attention to ink, right? This is the product and age. However the ink ages, and you're usually gonna have like this parabolic curve, right, where we have it looking good, and we have it looking like sheet. So do that so I don't have to fucking whatever. Um, that timeline, however it's gonna be, right? This is where we're gonna start mapping out when we have to interact with it again, right? If we're at you know a six month block where we know it's at like roughly, we'll do, I know we'll do greater than or equal to, 80% um, of efficacy of when you put it into the body, how is that going to influence the black pigment that you're going to be putting around it to build contrast, right? Should we overlay some more pigment on top of it, mixing with it to bring it up and make it more vibrant? Or should we maybe tone it down? Should we tone it up? Should we do something with the tattoo that is going to make it work better with the next session that we're doing, right? And what we're going to be constantly doing is looking at this curve to try and identify in these complex large designs when best to do the next thing. Get it? I know this is difficult. It's really hard to think about this stuff because we've all been trained that we just need to get it in, get it done, get them out, get that money, that hard-earned Skrilla, and get that stuff up on social media so you can get those likes. But realistically, like, we need to be looking at longevity before we're thinking about social interaction, right? Before people think that we're great, we need to think about how this is going to look in five years, 10 years, 15 years. Because if you don't know that, your tattoo career that may skyrocket <laughs> at the beginning is gonna have a precipitous fall off when people start noticing that your tattoos three months, six months, five years down the road look like shit. So think about it. Think about what your clients want and how much money they're spending and what that end result is gonna be. Anyways, that's it for today. It's Ryan from Better Tattooing, signing off.